Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara, and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Happy New Year's. Welcome to the first episode of the Consciousness Anywhere podcast in 2022. I am Shannon O'Hara, your presenter, your host, and I do a holiday uh, New Year's episode. Uh, I've done it the last two years about like creating your new year. And I was looking at that for this year. And I actually sat down yesterday and started sort of working towards recording an episode and it just wasn't working. And so I looked at what would I really like to, to talk about and what could actually really be helpful for like creating your year. And what started to kind of come to me was this thing about getting conscious in a world of distractions getting conscious in a world that's designed to distract you? How do you get conscious in a world full of distractions? Can you get conscious in a world full of distractions? And, you know, it's like whether you really cognitively or consciously realize it or not, so many of us are (laughs) really distracted a lot of the times. And is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? What are the impacts of that distraction? And if we're going to frame this episode as a creative conversation. So the creation of 2022, you know, the creation of your life, using the new year as a springboard to explore what you truly desire, then I think it would be amiss to leave out one of the greatest culprits against creation, which is distraction. You know, it's like, so in Access Consciousness, we talk about Lots of different stuff. Like, there's a lot of conversation about creation, um, what creation actually is, and then how to do it. And we also talk about something called the distractor implants, which is a whole bunch of stuff, primarily sort of like emotions, thoughts, feelings, but also there are some actions in the distractor implants. Um, And some of the distractor implants, said distractor implants, um, love, sex, jealousy, hate, blame, shame, regret, guilt, fear, just to name a few. There's just as many more. And there is a book called Living Beyond Distraction that is, I highly, highly recommend. It'll be in the show notes for this episode because it talks a lot about the distractor implants. And so as an access consciousness facilitator, I am very adept at identifying distractor implants when they come up. Uh, like, for example, jealousy or hate or blame or shame, especially fear. Um, since I facilitate a lot of people around the spirit world, I've had to really deal with and work through the distractor implants of fear in myself and with others over the many years that I've been doing this. And if you look at distraction, so basically, like, I wanted to look at this distracted thing from three different angles. One of which is the distractor implants, which we talk about in Access quite extensively. Um, it's really one of the cornerstones. The dis- uh, knowing what the distractor implants are and then being effective and proactive in identifying when you're in one and then choosing beyond it uh, by looking at what it's actually designed to distract you from is like one of the most freeing and liberating things to function from. Like, for example, <laughs> imagine right now that you were never impacted, stopped, you know, or affected by fear ever again, or by jealousy, or by blame, or by shame, or by regret. And just those, the ones that I just named, I mean, if you're listening to this and you live on planet Earth, you know those all too well. You know, you've had them come up a bazillion times in your life. And have it, have you ever been successful in sort of like, not being impacted by them or changing it or getting free of it in any real long lasting way. And the reason why so many of us are not successful in getting free of those distractions (laughs) is because they're not real. So blame, shame, regret, guilt, fear, jealousy are 
they're not actually like sane, logical, real and true emotions, feelings, thoughts. They're literally designed to put you into a, to get you to react to, so you're distracted. So once you're in one of those, you're completely distracted from making another choice, from having more freedom, for, from knowing what's real and true for you, et cetera, et cetera. So those distractor implants are really huge, like on a psychological level <laughs> and on an energetic level. Um, and then there's all these other distractions that we deal with in our lives. And I was just, um, probably many of you guys have already seen it, but I finally watched uh, The Social Dilemma on Netflix uh, yesterday. And I, I have, if you haven't seen it, by the way, like watch it. <laughs> it's like, I have actually been putting off watching it for a really long time. I always knew it was there and my husband watched it. He's like, you should really watch this and da, 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 da. And I kept on putting it off. Not like I don't want to watch it. We're just like, it's not the right time. So finally, you know, we're having Christmas right now and I've got all this sort of space and I just, you know, clicked it on just to pass some time. And I started watching The Social Dilemma and it's all about social media and how (laughs) the systems works and how they're designed. And it's a bunch of the guys mostly men and some of the women who, you know, developed like the monetization algorithms for Facebook and you know, like endless scroll for Instagram and like all this stuff and how sort of like an email Gmail inbox would be designed and how the notifications um, would be designed to, you know, on all the social media platforms and like all the sort of all of the technological engineering behind all that and how it's impacting and affecting uh, people now. Um, and that then sort of was like the straw that broke the camel's back for me because I started reading the work, uh, a book called Deep Work by a man named Cal Newport. Um, I've read it now several times (laughs) in the last two months and, um, it's called Deep Work. I'm going to give you the full title. Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World. So, I just started listening to it because I heard this little excerpt of it where he was talking about how most people have the brain power to have like focused cognitive work for a maximum of four hours a day. And when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so interesting because I have noticed over the last several years running my own business and working a lot that like really I could only get a good four hours in of like, really heavy duty, like cognitive work, whether that's sitting in front of a computer or facilitating a class or working on writing a book or putting together a program. Like I really would burn out around four hours and I would make myself wrong about that. Like all the time, like, Oh, I should be able to get back to work and da da da. So when I heard that part of the book, I was like, hold on, I got to check out what this guy's talking about. So I've read the book several times, also highly recommend it. Um, and I was doing, I was so into getting this sort of like new information and new way of functioning under my belt that I like put together like a book club with some of my colleagues, you know, and we all read the book and we discuss it and we talk about how we're applying his suggestions for, you know, not getting distracted. Uh, And one of my colleagues said something super interesting. She was like, you know, I thought I was working a lot before, but I have noticed that when I start to sit down to work on a book, Um, And this particular colleague, she writes a lot of books and manuals and programs. Work that requires a lot of focus and attention to really craft and work through big problems and find the, you know, study and find the resources in the media to compose these bodies of work. She said, you know, I just noticed how like, so one of the things in Cal Newport's book is he talks about um, like shallow work and also distractive instruments like social media, email as a distraction. Um, obviously television. Um, and there's other stuff too, but I think I'll just use social media. We all, I think most of us listening to this right now can probably relate to this. How many times a day do you look at your phone to see the messages or the notifications or how many people liked your post or, you know, and you're constantly getting pinged for that stuff. And she just stated like, it's incredible how when I sit down, how easily I get distracted by wanting to respond to everybody else's messages and everyone else pulling on me and everything else that people need like immediately to get on with their work and da, 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 da. All of which is of course part of, you know, business in this day and age. Like most of us probably work in businesses that have messaging platforms like Slack or 
Skype or WhatsApp or where you're using some sort of um, other messaging platform where you're in touch with your colleagues. But those messaging platforms are, yes, they can facilitate logistical stuff, but they tend not to be where the deep work occurs. Of course, there needs to be that coordination on those messaging platforms. Um, and that kind of work is relevant for productivity in businesses um, and life, you know. And there is this other uh, kind of work that Cal Newport notes as or coins as deep work. And so he basically is talking about deep work, which is the kind of work that affects change. You know, stuff like um, he, I think, is like a computer program. So he, computer programmer. So like writing code and like for me, it's definitely like writing books and facilitating classes that requires like a huge amount of focus energy from me to be able to work through the stuff that has to be worked through for, you know, the facilitation of consciousness and the articulation of consciousness through my writing. And so, you know, whether we're talking about the production of, you know, your body of work, the deep work that, that, that makes your life worth living, that that is your gift, your offering to the world, or we're actually talking about getting conscious, we can't deny the level of distraction that occurs in all of our lives and, and, and how much some of us might love those distractions. You know, it's like, how many of you guys love being able to just sort of like switch off and like scroll through Instagram or, you know, just like clock into your emails or put on YouTube or put the TV on or, you know, talk to a friend about nothing much in particular, like, and those kind of conversations and, and actions of YouTube or Instagram or talking to a friend aren't wrong. They're just, sometimes those can be like deep work recovery and sometimes those can be distraction. Sometimes those can be recreation time. And sometimes that can be creating a connection with a friend. And sometimes it can be a bunch of stuff. But are you recognizing the actions that contribute to the life, the living, the future, the consciousness that you'd like to have? The, the, what, what is it you'd like to be the source of in the world? And if we start looking at sort of like consciousness as a quest, as a valid target in life, you know, we have, we live in a world where the normal targets are, you know, family, marriage, money, job, um, sports, I guess. I don't think that's a target. I think that's a leisure or a distraction. Um, or physical fitness, which is sometimes imperative for consciousness. I would say physical, I would say body health is pretty imperative for consciousness. Actually, health is a byproduct of consciousness. Sorry, I, dev I, I devolve. Um, if you look at consciousness as a worthy, as a, as a valid target for life, you can't ignore what distracts you from consciousness and expect everything to be easy. So what distractions are you using to avoid the consciousness you could be choosing? And it's like, I think this is such an interesting time to really be looking at, I would say there's like, we could go, there's like, there's a scale of distraction. There's distract, distraction light, which I actually think Instagram is like distraction light. And then there's like distraction extreme. Um, or mega distraction, which is fear or jealousy, um, hate. Like those are those are psychological distractions that really take you out of your awareness, take you out of presence, take you out of choice, and put you into this total reaction that distracts you from having any sort of peace. Um, and the thing about consciousness is it includes everything, including hate, jealousy, reaction, distraction, um, Instagram email, uh, it, 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 you know, consciousness includes unconsciousness and it doesn't judge it. So the cool thing about consciousness is it can help show you what you might be distracting yourself with. And is that is being distracted going to lead to, you know, the future you'd like to have, the life you truly desire to have, um, and the reality you want to create. And one of the really 
I think, really interesting things going on right now is in the social dilemma, for example, they're really indicating that there's now generations being born who will have social media and sort of handheld devices for their entire lifetime. And what kind of an impact that that is going to have on those people psycho- psychologically um, and in their sort of like ability to connect to the world. There's like tons of studies now going on. Um, there was actually something really interesting mentioned in the social dilemma about um, like preteen, like anxiety and depression in teenage girls and preteen girls prior to 19, oh no, to prior to 2010. I think 2010 is when sort of like everyone started having a mobile phone. Um, Well, not everyone, but a lot of people. And so basically like young girls growing up with social media sort of like at their fingertips all the time how the rates of anxiety and depression went up like 110% in um, teens, in preteen, and then in preteen girls, it went up over 200%. And then the uh, amount of suicides going on in teenage girls went up like a huge percentage and also in preteen girls where it had never been an issue before. And also the like uptick in young girls having body dysmorphia and wanting to get plastic surgery to make their faces look more like they're the filters on their social media, you know, platforms, which is sort of like, it's, I doubt that those are the people that are listening to this podcast right now, but it's this thing to be aware of that there is this really seductive thing that we hold in our hand every day called a smartphone. And it is capable of, it can connect us like to more consciousness, like I'm sure a lot of you guys are listening to this podcast on your smartphone right now. And so you're using your smartphone as a tool for education. And then the smartphone can also be used as a tool for entertainment. And the smartphone can also be used as a tool for distraction. And it's like, sort of like, how are you using it? And one of the interesting um, indicators that one of the people in the social dilemma mentioned was that, sorry, I can't remember the guy's name, but he basically was like a tool, you know, like a hammer or a bicycle will just sit there and it'll be inert until you reach for it and use it. But social media is not inert. It's constantly sort of like, it's literally designed to manipulate you into reaching for it and into using it, which is a massive distraction. And when I read the deep work book, I realized like how much of my day I was literally wasting like on social media. And I used to sort of really appreciate social media for being this sort of like free platform to invite people to consciousness. And I mean, I'm still appreciative of it as a free platform to invite people to consciousness and a platform to be able to connect to more people looking for consciousness. And it has been that and it has worked in that way. And now, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but Instagram has now decided to show me an advertisement every third Every third image is an advertisement. And that's really like the direction this is going where it's like, we're no longer sort of like, we're, we're being used by social media. We are, we are the product that social media is designed. The advertisers who are paying uh, these platforms are targeting us. And that doesn't need to be like a bad thing. However, it also could become a very slippery slope if you're not very clear in your own world about what creates. And scrolling Instagram, watching YouTube, being on Twitter, um, constantly checking in with your notifications, WhatsApp, Telegram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When does that stop being productive and when does that start being a distraction? Number one. And if that is a distraction. If you removed all that, now this is the really awesome thing for me, at least, maybe terrifying for others. If you removed all that distraction, so if your phone went away, if your computer went away, then what? Well, then we're basically going back like 40 years, right? Where you had to stand at the phone that was hooked up to the wall. You know, you got your messages when you got home. You couldn't text somebody when you were running late. You had to sort of rely on word of mouth. You had to be very present in your environment because you couldn't look at Google Maps to tell you where to go. It was a completely different way of living. And 
I'm not saying that that was better than what we have now because I absolutely love the convenience of Google Maps. Don't get me wrong. And I have noticed that when you get too reliant on things that don't contribute to you being more conscious, that becomes a question of where is that going to lead you? You know, does Google Maps make you more conscious? <laughs> or does it just alleviate you from having to work a little bit harder to learn how to read a map, to ask somebody directions? Um, and does asking somebody for directions or learning how to read a map make you more, more conscious? Absolutely not. Does being present in your environment make you more conscious? Yeah, potentially. You know, actually being present, not being distracted by guilt, blame, shame, regret, judgment, um, and having to rely on the resources, the energy, the information, the people um, immediately around you is becoming a really lost commodity. It's like instead of being able to actually communicate face-to-face -face with people, people are hiding now behind, and I'm using the word hiding deliberately and specifically, hiding behind um, their smartphones or their computers. You'd rather text message than make a phone call. And that is very much a new generational thing. And when we stop learning how to communicate with each other and perceive what's going on with somebody by looking them in the face, what kind of a world is that? Is that a world with more consciousness or is that a world with more distraction? And so as we're heading into 2020, it's like, I mean, I can't help but indicate the level of what I'm going to go ahead and call distraction that the world news has been putting forward over the last couple of years as we've been riding these waves of the corona stuff and finding out what's real and true has been really interesting via, you know, social media and public, you know, mainstream news. Because many of you guys noticed that platforms like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram were censoring people. And you couldn't post anything about your point of view if, the, if your point of view didn't follow the, the, you know, the, the main stream media's point of view about what was going on. Like That was the first time in my life I'd ever seen censorship like that. And I was so shocked to see it coming from these platforms that are supposedly social media, but they're not really social media anymore. They are platforms to gather data and information about its users, meaning you and me, so that we can be targeted more <laughs> cleverly uh, by marketers. And then maybe even other stuff. So if we lost all distraction, just imagine this for a moment with me. How many of you guys got nervous for a second? Like, oh no, I'm going to be bored. Or, oh no, I'm going to have to like, you know, be present. Or, oh my God, how am I going to create my life? Um, it was interesting watching and listening to the Netflix social dilemma. There was one guy who was talking about how I think he was talking about Twitter and how it's just like every year it becomes like it it becomes billions of dollars more um, valuable. And he goes, it's really the more valuable it becomes, the harder it is to stop. And and I thought, well, no, it isn't. <laughs> like you just literally stop. You know, we put in all these, we have all these like reasons and justifications for, you know, why we need to continue to <sighs> do things, even things that are distractive and distracting, um, distract us from being present, distract us from consciousness, distract us even from like being more present with our children or distract us from being more present with our spouses or with our bodies or with 
the, for those of you guys, you know, my fellow sort of like, you know, creators, the people, those of us who are authors or developers of large scale international businesses or who have, you know, who are creating deeply complex and sort of industry changing material and um, components. It's like that kind of stuff doesn't just happen like in between the time when you're like scrolling Instagram, that sort of stuff has to be prioritized. Like, and prioritizing, so taking, you know, actually prioritizing time to be able to exercise your maximum cognitive function. It's like, that is definitely an action that the few are taking. However, it is, essential for those that desire to actually create something of any real substance in the world. So what would your, what would be your like top distracting thing? You know, it's like, if you guys are, those of you guys that are brave, come on this journey and this adventure with me. It's like, what's like your top one, two or three distracting things, you know, like I have a girlfriend of mine, like a really good friend of mine who cigarettes would definitely be in her top, like three distractors, you know, like if there's something she doesn't doesn't want to be aware of, there's something she doesn't want to deal with, like she'll smoke a cigarette. And for others, you know, other, you know, acquaintances and also good, good, dear friends of mine would definitely be alcohol. You know, alcohol is a massive distractor. You know, like for me, I would say Instagram has been like, a real genuine distraction for me over the last, since I just got, I even say I got to Instagram very late. Like I didn't discover it till like almost like just two years ago. And then I thought it was like, and then I was like really into it. But now I'm like, wow, there's like so much time I spend scrolling Instagram. And I, and I even, you know, look at my, you know, cause your phone keeps stats of how much you spend in each app each day. And I look at that if it ranges for from 20 minutes to an hour I look at that, I'm like, and, or sometimes more than an hour, I'm like, wow, like I could have been working on one of my seven book projects in that time that I was just fluffing around. And it's not that Instagram isn't like, is it, it, it's not that it's bad. It's that it needs to be recognized as something that I do as a treat that after I've done my deep work, you know, after I've focused, after I've exerted, after I've done um, a good concentrated dose of the expansion of consciousness through whatever action and modality that takes for me on that day, then yes, of course, I can scroll Instagram as a treat, but it can't be something that I, as it's like a go-to all the time. And that's just for me personally. That would just be like one of my top three distractions. Another one of my top three distractions, absolutely, and I'll have to be brutally honest and admit this, would be judgment. I distract myself with judgments of myself primarily all the time. How many of you guys can relate? So it's like, if you, if you write down what your like top three distractions are, and even better, if you know what the distractor implants are, if you've done access consciousness, if you've done the foundation class and you know those distractor implants, or you have that living beyond distraction book, like there are, there can be so many of us that get really stuck in very specific distractor implants, you know, like, I've been listening to my husband recently use the word hate a lot. And it's not an accident. Like what he's actually bringing up is the places where he's in the distraction of hate. And I've watched him get so, I've got so much freedom and so much clarity in his own world. Um, You know, just the other day, he was really struggling about something. And finally he was just like, God, the stuff with my mom that's going on. I just feel like I hate what she's doing. And I was like, and I, and I heard him say hate. And I, and I immediately went through my Rolodex of tools. And I went, wait, I know what hate is. It's a distractor implant. And I said to him, I said, and he knows it too. He knows it's a distractor implant too. And I said, is that really hate, honey? And he goes, no, I've never recognized how much she judges herself. And it was like this massive opening of awareness. And he got access to so much more energy because he had been sort of like diverting all of his energy or blocking energy with, with that distraction of hate. And that's exactly what they're designed to do. So if, if you want to play with this, sort of creating your 2022 in a world full of distractions because the distractions aren't going to go away. Like it's going to even get more. I think it will, the world will get even more loud, essentially. You know, it's like, look at what your top distractions are. Whether it's cigarettes, alcohol, 
you know, jealousy, judgment, hate, Instagram, <laughs> food, um, TV, whatever, right? Like write down your top three and then just look at like, if you want to keep doing that and just noticing when it comes up, like that's even the thing, just bringing consciousness to that, that you are being distracted can even be like a massive contribution to change. And if you can address these, the distractions that, that sort of collapse creation or steal energy from creation, I wonder if there might be some energy that, that would be added to then what you desire to create. And let's face it, it's like how many of you guys listening to this distract yourselves so you don't succeed? You know, so you don't have to be present with what's going on. So you don't have to change. So you don't have to confront and deal with your life or your relationships or the world or the stuff going on that you just feel completely helpless to deal with. And although I can sort of sympathize with that, it's also fact of the matter is it just doesn't work. <laughs> like being distra- distracting yourself is never going to handle anything. It'll just sort of distract you until eventually maybe you succeed at avoiding everything until you die, which happens. That's a way of doing it. (laughs) That's the way you want to do it. And I know that if you're here and you found this podcast and you're interested in consciousness, like I know you know you're going to have to deal with stuff. You're going to have to make choices. And isn't that that? Isn't that the gift of life is choosing and moving forward and living? (laughs) So what's it going to take to create your 2022 and what's it going to take to be conscious in a world full of distractions? Do the distractions matter or is it your choice that makes all of the difference? I appreciate each and every one of you that steps up and shows up to these sorts of conversations, I think I am probably a little bit confronting. (laughs) I have this, I have this like urgent aggression towards change. You know, it's like, I, oh my God, I spent, I've spent so much of my life sort of being freaked out by how much unconsciousness (laughs) I saw in the world and, you know, choice by choice, tool by tool, really using the tools of access consciousness. I got myself to the place where I could be in allowance of everything that was being chosen by others, including myself and given the tools to be a productive source of consciousness rather than a resistance and a reaction, like just constantly exploding and being basically freaked out and helpless about what I saw going on in the world and the places in which I felt that I had no power. And of course you want to distract yourself from where you feel you have no power and no ability to change stuff. And, you know, when you can, when you really start buying the insanity is real and true when it isn't. So please check out the living beyond distraction books uh, or book. It will be in the show notes of this call. Please watch The Social Dilemma. I will say, I think there is some heavy stuff that they do in there too. It's not like all, I don't think it's all correct. Like they're, they're stating a lot of really like, they're stating a lot of stuff that's really not a question and they're putting, they're framing things in a particular way that sort of make it seem like, you know, like the end of the world. And it's really not. It's just a choice. Like we all have a choice. And um, that's what really, it stood out for me. It was like, wow, like I, aren't I lucky? Like I really have a choice. Aren't I lucky that I'm not really that in Instagram? Like, aren't I lucky that, I am totally willing to have all technology go away tomorrow. (sighs) And check out those of you guys that, you know, are big thinkers, uh, enjoy big focus projects or, you know, really are interested in creating a body of work. Check out the deep workbook by Cal Newport. I, I think I'm also pretty late in the upswing on that book. I've, I, I know it came out a while ago and I only recently tuned into it, but it's, it's really made like a huge difference for me in a really positive way. I'm extremely excited about this new way of functioning. And I know that it's 
a really big component for me becoming a greater contribution. Love you guys. See you in the next podcast. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Thank you.